Hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud. Pop your feet up and relax as we bring you a quick in-depth look at some showbiz news, a brief but extensive view of fun stories from the internet, and an educational folly in our life lesson. But before we crack on, let's say ayo to the man whose alt account is actually just unicorns and kittens, it's Lee. Ayo. Ayo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back serving you some showbiz news realness, including a story about a favourite breakfast television return. And in between mischief making on forums, I found a few stories, including a story about how to carry a bird around with you. If you want to keep up with our latest shenanigans, you can always find us on The Could TV on your social media sites, our website, which is thecud.tv, and if you want to listen to this wonderful show as a podcast, just search for Chewing The Could. And if you have commented, shared, or clicked like on one of our social media platforms, then your name should be sliding along the screen now, like an oiled snake. Now this week, I might let you in. Let me? Let me? How very dare you? Yeah, right, the only way you will win is if I don't answer any questions. It's time to play. Game of the Week. This week, the producer is away at a whiskey tasting event on the banks of Loch Ness. He says he likes nothing more than when a Scotchman slips him two fingers on the rocks. While he's away, he's asked us to decide whether these phobias are real or made up. Let's have the first one. Anna Tidophia fear. Anna Tidophia fear. <laughs> Apparently, it's the fear of being watched by a duck. Oh. Anat, Anat, I can't say it, but it's that's what it says. <laughs> Anatidopia, Phobia. Fear of a duck watching you crack one off. <laughs> <laughs> is it just crack one off or is it just watching you? Just watching you. Just watching you. Mm. Through the window. <laughs> or you crack one off. At least. <laughs> yeah, making, making quacking noises. Um... I don't know. No, I, I don't think that's true. I th it probably is, because there is a fear of... Is it a avian... aviophobia? Fear aviophobia. Of, of, of birds? Of birds. Coming swooping down and pecking your eyes out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to say yeah. OK. And I don't so think it's mallard. true. <laughs> Shall we see? Yeah. <laughs> Is it real or is it fake? It is a phobia. I was right. Yeah. Yeah. I knew. Hate it when ducks stare at me. Do you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Buses, trains, back of the car. Hate it. <laughs> Just, <laughs> really weird places ducks are watching here, Lee. They're everywhere. OK. Moving on. Um, shall we get the next one up? Yeah. So, metrophobia is the fear of trams. Hmm. Well, metro mm -hmm. is 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 vehicular. Vehicular. Um, so, I'm going to go no. You're going to go no. No, I don't think it is. Fear of trams. Tramophobia. Tramophobia would be the fear of trams. Clearly, tramadol is a tablet. Um, I'm going to say it is a phobia. It is a phobia. Let let us see. Let's have a look. Du, 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 du. Oh, it's fake. It's, it's a fear, fear of poetry. poetry. Who's scared of a poem? <sighs> I wandered lonely as a cloud. <gasps> no! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, one point each. Each. Okay. Let's have, let's have another phobia. <laughs> Circumcisophobia is the fear of being circumcised. Oh. Well, just a quite rational fear, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I, I think that's a fear of circles. Do you? Mm. Not foreskins. Not foreskins. No. Okay. No. I don't. I don't think it is. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Have. Should we have a look then? Let's see. Oh, mm. it isn't. It isn't. So we're right. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I've heard about men in because in America, mm -hmm. circumcision is kind of like. A thing that just happens. Yeah. Um, and men who have been circumcised as children, um, they they put weights on their skin that's left to, to create a foreskin. Oh, right. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. Mm. 
Okay. Did you know that in ancient times they used to say that the rings of Saturn were Jesus's foreskin? I did not know that. Yeah. Now I do. Very well hung, man. Oh, Very well. Yeah, hung. indeed. Enough foreskin. Let's talk. Let's, let's have another. <laughs> no, more foreskin. <laughs> it's always a drawback, though, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> That's one for you. <laughs> Phallophobia is the fear of erections. Oh. Now, you see, I used to have this fear. Did you? Yes. Um, but luckily, um, they, they went through aversion therapy, which is where you just continually expose yourself to the thing you're scared of time and time and time again. Yeah. Un until you wear away your gag reflex. I mean, you get, get okay. over the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was very successful, wasn't it? Was it was very Some successful. Some might say almost too successful. Too successful. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go, well, phallus mm -hmm. means penis. Yes. So... I think it's true. I think it's true, yeah. Yeah, let's see if it is indeed the fear of a bunkum. Phallophobia is the fear of erections. It's a phobia. Oh, one that you've battled through. I've battled through. And come through and, the other side. Come through the other side, yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's lob look. another one up. <laughs> Mammillophobia <laughs> is the fear of nipples slash breasts. Now, is that slashed breasts? No, or slashed breasts. Nipples breast. or breasts? Nipples or and or breasts. And or breasts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was mammillophobia. 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 Yeah. Well, mammary is. Yeah, I just like, I just like to keep saying mammary. You're just mammillophobia. I, like, I like the word. Um, <laughs> I don't think it is. No, it doesn't feel right. But, <laughs> but then the producers tricked us up like this before Yarr. with the double bluff. So I'm going to say, yes, it is a real thing. I don't think it is a real thing. Boobs are good. It's, it's a phobia. Yeah. It's true. Oh. Okay. Gosh. Yeah. How, how would you breastfeed as a child? I don't think as a child you know you've got that. Well, no, a phobia is an irrational fear of something. Yeah. So you can't have a phobia of dying. Yeah. Because that's a rational thing. Yeah. But if you're a baby, mm -hmm. you aren't aware that that's a breast. So you wouldn't go, ah, I can't eat. I think, I think you are aware of it, because, you know, it's yeah. the big round would, thing that gives out milk. <laughs> I would imagine it would be more than the woman who would be frightened of her own, you know, oh, I've got to get that out. I don't, this is very <laughs> weird. <laughs> I thought you meant the baby for a second. No, I thought that's what you meant, the, the baby. Yeah. Went, <laughs> no, the baby oh, would be scared sorry. of the boob. Yeah. 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 Shall we move on? Yeah, please. Okay. Rasticophobia is a fear of stepping on garden rakes. No. No, it's not. No. <laughs> That's a definite no. Have you ever stepped on a garden rake? No, I'm not a cartoon character from the 1940s, so I haven't done it. <laughs> you see, I have stepped on a garden rake. Have you? And it's actually quite difficult to make it swack you in the Wang face. in your yeah. face. Yeah. Quite difficult. Yeah. Because you're like... basically standing on spikes. Yeah. So you put your foot on spikes and go, ah -ha! Yeah. You don't tend to... Yeah, continue think, walking. Yeah. So I'm going to say no, it isn't It isn't a fear of... of, of I think of it breaks. probably is because people are You think it is, but I think it isn't. Let's see who's right. Let's see who's wrong. It's fake. I was right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies. All right. <laughs> it's like, I was right. <laughs> shall, we see, shall, we, shall we see what, what, what scoreage is? Yes, why not? Let's just... Oh, it's 4-3. Four, 4-3. Three. Four, three. I need to get this one right to get, yeah. make a draw. Yeah, okay, pop it on. Petrif Petrificobiphobi booby doo 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 is the fear <laughs> of being turned into stone. <laughs> you are a bit, um, what's it, Peter? Doo be doo be doo be doo be doo be doo. Petrificobia. 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 Well, petrify is to be turned to stone. Uh huh. It's also to be scared. It is, yes. Um, I'm going to go yes. Mm. It is, it is um, a fear of being turned to stone. I don't think it is. <laughs> Because to be petrified is to be scared. Yeah. Right? And phobia means you're scared of. So what that says is scared, scared. Scared, scared. But scared, if your scared. petrification, which is being turned into stone... That, that came from the, the being so scared that you turned to stone, unable okay. to move. Let's just see who's, who's right and who's wrong. Let's just see it. Let's see it. Let's see. It's oh, fake. it's fake. Oh, OK, then. See? Tell me juice of that. Ah. <laughs> so at the end of that, it was a draw. Was it a draw? Yeah. 
It's a draw. Oh, well done. Both well of done us. us. Yes. Mm. Everybody loses. Yeah. No, everyone draws. <laughs> no, so if it, there's it, a draw, everyone's lost. It's 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 reset. It's reset. It's reset. Um, okay. Yeah. So still to come, we are bringing you the next life lesson. Well, that's just after we jump into the mind of Lee Shelby's news. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. It's time for us to speak to the man who thought the biscuit game was something very different. It's Lee and the Showbiz News. To be fair, knowing you, uh -huh. I thought it was a, I thought it was soggy biscuit. Thought no, that's no. What, what you were going to talk about. No, that's not it at all. No. No. Okay, let's let, let's do some Showbiz News. So... Breakfast television, back in the day, mm -hmm. you, you had a couple of choices. You had the serious BBC, mm -hmm. the semi-serious ITV, or you had the big breakfast on Channel 4. Which did you go for? Um, so I went for um, the big breakfast. Of course. But because I've always been an early morning person, mm -hmm. I used to have to watch the BBC. Okay. Because the big breakfast only started at 7, didn't it? Yeah, it did, yeah. So for the first hour, I had to watch actual boring news. Oh, real news. Well... Good news, Mike. Oh. Because the big breakfast is being brought back. Oh, no. Well, it's being... Well, not forever. So we've got a picture here of some of the presenters that mm -hmm. they had over the years. So you've got Johnny Vaughan, you've got Chris Evans, uh -huh. Denise Van Outen. Looks like she's being given an internal examination by Richard... Bacon. Bacon. Mm -hmm. And then we have Zig and Zag. Zig and Zag! Mm -hmm. Um... But um, it's been brought back by Channel 4 for, as a one-off. Um, it's going to be fronted by Mo Gilligan, who's um, a stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. And it's all part of Channel 4's day programming where they're going to showcase black talent. And it's okay. going to be called Black Talent Takeover Day. So all the programmes in one day screening of Channel 4 mm -hmm. are going to be presented by black actors, black presenters. Okay. All the programmes are going to be from that perspective. So um, they're going to bring it back for one episode of All Big right. Breakfast, um, which I love The Big Breakfast. You see, I did, but it, it aged very quickly. Do you think? So we, when we got past the, the Johnny Vaughan version, mm. and, and we got into it and it was very much... Yeah, a, when they same, kind of had same, like same. Richard Bacon and that, it had kind of run yeah. its course. Um, but... You know, I, I didn't mind when they had... Who was the Australian guy who'd been on Neighbours? Mark Little? Yeah, yeah. And Mark he did it with Lisa Tarbuck? Mm -hmm. They were quite funny. They were, but still, it was... It, it got to a it point where... Yes. So, originally, it ran for 10 years between 1992 and 2002, mm -hmm. which I thought it was, it was longer than that for some reason. No, it just felt longer. Um, so, yeah, obviously we had... Chris Evans was the original with Gabby Roslin, then Johnny Vaughan and Denise Van Outen, Kelly Brook... Oh. Ooh, awkward. So, Black Takeover Day is going to be broadcast in 2021. Mm -hmm. And it will see programmes like Hollyoaks, with a specially written episode. Um, they're going to do other television programmes. Uh, Celebrity Gogglebox is going to be filmed from, from a black perspective. Uh, Countdown, Channel 4 News. All with the, the black perspective. Um, it's It's... In kind of response to a lot of the stuff that's been going on in the media mm -hmm. around, particularly around sort of Channel Four, there was a, there was um, an issue with Hollyoaks mm -hmm. where one of one of the black actresses f stated that she felt that she wasn't treated the same as the other actresses. Right. Um, and um, so it's the it's the Sir Lenny Henny Lenny Henny. Lenny Henny. The Lenny Henny. Lenny Henny. Lenny oh. Henny. <laughs> it's the Sir Lenny Henry Centre for Media Diversity. They're going to help create this this day um, and to leave a lasting legacy. So it could well be that it's the start of um, a new new way of telev televising things. Yeah. Televising things. All right. I went. I went all. I went all um, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Um, so, yeah, that's something I, w I will look forward to that. Yeah. Because I like the big breakfast. Yeah, I just think it's a bit of a shame that we have to have a day for black presenters only. Yeah. They should be equally represented in media all the time anyway. Mm. So, well done, Channel 4, for going, we're doing this. Yeah, but they shouldn't have had but to do it, it in the first it shouldn't, place. It shouldn't be there because yeah. everybody should be equally represented on, on TV, no matter what you age, ethnicity, sexual orientation, anything, you should just be on there. Mm. Oh, it got me dander up there. Oh, you did. Oh. Mm. 
Taron Edgerton. Are you a fan mm. of Taron Edgerton? I am. Are you? I am. He's, he's one of my guilty crushes. He has had to, well, he hasn't had to, but he has um, taken to social media to, to deny that he's going to be playing Wolverine in the new X-Men films. Okay. So um, we've got a picture here. This is Taron on the left and Hugh Jackman on the right as who played Wolverine. Mm -hmm. um, and in the current X-Men universe, Wolverine's dead, I think. Yeah, he is. He's dead. Is he? Do you know? Well, not really. That's what it said. So, technically, if we're, we're going on the timeline, then he is dead, but it's also in the future that he's dead. Okay. So he's not dead right now. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, so rumours have been going around that he's going to, to be cast as, as, as Wolverine. He's taken to social media to say, no, I love Marvel, it's really flattering, um, but at the moment, there's, there's no way. Um, he doesn't feel that physically he can get away with with yeah. with that. So perhaps in a, in a couple of years' time, when he's when he sits up, we have a picture here. This is not actually him. Oh. This is this is fan art that they've cr they've kind of superimposed his head onto someone's body, Wolverine's body. Yeah. Um, I'm not hating it either. I'm not hating it either. No, I, I you know I quite happily spend a few moments with that. Moments. <laughs> Yeah, um, it isn't. But <laughs> oh, good. Um, it isn't the first time that Taron has been Fingers. linked <laughs> <laughs> in your imagination uh, with with Hugh Jackman. Qu a few years ago, he starred in the Eddie the Eagle Edwards film. He did. Yeah, uh, he played Eddie the Eagle, and mm -hmm. uh, Hugh Jackman played his trainer. Mm -hmm. The thing I loved about this was that. Um, at the kind of press junkets and stuff afterwards, um, loads of photographs were taken of, of um, Taron looking really, really adoringly at Hugh mm -hmm. Jackman. We've got, look, ah, yeah. bless. He like, really liked him. Yeah. He's cute. Well, well to be fair, I'd be looking like uh, Hugh Jackman as well. You'd li be licking his face, wouldn't you? I'd be trying to. Mm. So he said, maybe in a few years I'll look rough enough for it. He's made no secret of the fact that he's a fan of those kind of films um, and he would love to be part of it. But at the moment, he's not doing that. Oh, OK. No. So we have to wait for a few years before he be yeah. becomes rough and ready. Yeah. So that, well, yeah. So it obviously means they're going to make more X-Men films. Oh, yeah, they're not going to stop. Yeah. So, yeah, not the ones with... Um, the bad wig that they gave Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. A jamboree oh, for Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're doing a, gr a grease crossover. Could well do. Yeah. Look that at me, that would work Berry. well, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bit more surreal showbiz news now. So George Ezra, mm -hmm. are you a fan of his music? I do like his music. I can't name one song that he's ever done. Um, listen to the man. No. Um, Barcelona. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, not not the Freddie Mercury bars. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, not that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, he can't. I know he has an album called "Staying at Tamara's" or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I'm I'm not a fan. But anyway, we we've covered stuff in the past where celebrities have, have kind of said that they believe in conspiracy theories mm -hmm. about stuff. Yeah. So Scarlett Moffat has a podcast where she. So discusses the fact that people are like clones <laughs> yeah, and rambles on yeah, for twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, and and George Ezra has said this kind of a similar thing. So he doesn't think that all A list celebrities that he's met are real. He thinks that they so so what he says is that is okay. he is is thinks they're, they're like a projection. No, he thinks they're like robots, they're animatronics. Right, okay. Well so, I can see that. So he was speaking on a podcast. So we've got a picture here of um, that famous animatronic. Was she called Sophie or Susie or that's good. That's Rachel good. or <laughs> Barbara, <laughs> Denise? Sophie, I think we're going to go with. Oh, OK. Sophie. She was like one of those, the first animatronic people that they made that could... Hang on Celebrities called Sophie that are animatronic. Sophie Ellis Baxter, we're on to you. Oh, yeah. Well, he was he was talking on a podcast and he said that there is definitely one or two A-list celebrities that he's met that are half android. Um, I don't want to get into that whole conspiracy, but I've met a few people in the public eye that are half bot. It's like bleep bloop, lovely to meet you, bleep bloop. That's something I have experienced. Now, I don't know whether he was... So when he said that the half bots, does he mean that they're verse? 
Are you are you doing like a science? Are you doing like a Star Trek? No, no, I'm doing sexy things. Oh, okay. Bottom, top verse, half bot. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I was trying to steer away from the geek, the geek bit where he says okay. you can't be half an android, you'd be a cyborg, because an android is completely uh, machine-based um, artificial intelligence, whereas a cyborg is part human or part bio biological and part machine. I was trying to avoid that, but you dragged me there. Okay, so he believes that, <laughs> but he also... <laughs> He also kind of says that, so he left his phone at home for a day. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and which he claims it angered his phone. His phone was not happy that he was left at, at home for the day. Um, so that when he got home and tried to use it, it started to glitch on purpose to pay him back. Okay. Hello. To be yeah. fair, I kind of go with that. I'm very much about, the, you know, an inanimate object will do something on purpose to hurt you. So if you stub your toe or you trap your finger in a drawer, it's done it on purpose. Okay. And you have to shout at it and swear at it or it'll keep doing it. So I'm with, with George on that. Thank you, Lee. It's always nice to know that some people are just as crazy as you are. <laughs> Coming soon, we have the next of our life lessons. That's right, but don't go anywhere because after this break, it's Mike with the buzz. Welcome back to Chewing the Cod. And now we go to the man who hasn't been called Sir without it being followed by You're Making a Scene. It's Mike in the Buzz. I've been deep in the internet this week. Balls deep. Wrist deep. Wrist deep. Wrist deep. Nice. Yes. Almost out towards the elbow, really. Ooh. Quite deep, yeah. Um, to find lots of lovely things. Oh. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, first, I have a question before we do. Do you? When, when you take Nell out for a walk, mm, yeah. how do you make sure she doesn't run off? Because she's on a lead. Is it an extendable lead? It is indeed. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, some people don't have dogs, so can't do that. Yeah, some other people have different pets. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, one very ingenious lady decided she wanted to take her bird out for a walk. A bird? A bird. Right? Okay. And so she decided, let's take my bird out for the walk in a backpack. Oh. And created a cage with, out of a clear black backpack okay. uh, with some holes so the bird can, can have a look around. Look around. To be fair, I was expecting it, it to be on a, like a, an extendable leash. <laughs> so he could fly so far and then go, Aah! and then drag it back in. <laughs> like feathers floating around. <laughs> that would be mean. But that's good. <laughs> yeah, that, that way the, the bird isn't at, like, at risk of flying away. And... No, it can, just, it can just suffocate in a plastic No, there's, there's air holes. Okay. There's air holes at the bottom, see? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm seeing the, those now. Yeah. Not killing a bird just by going, no. Come and see the lovely seaside and die. But I presume she would just have to walk. She couldn't jog or anything, otherwise the bird would be, like, shaking around inside the, the, <laughs> the, the thing. <laughs> uh, but surely if the bird was worried, it could fly, flap. Well, I hover. <laughs> hover, yeah. Birds can hover. Yeah. Did it enjoy itself, do we know? It did. Oh, well, that's all that counts. It's a, it's a regular occurrence, and it thoroughly enjoys its little meanders in the backpack. Well done. Yes. Bird. <laughs> An owner. <laughs> like clawing at the thing to get out. <laughs> Please release me. Help me! The next story I have, okay, it's getting close to Christmas. It is. Yeah. How would you feel about hearing Christmas songs right now? I would kill you and everybody in this building. Okay. And set it on fire and then drive away laughing. <laughs> Not a fan of Christmas songs? Not at this time of year. OK, well, maybe don't tune into this radio station then, mm. um, as they've got Christmas songs playing every day for, the, for four months. Oh, God. So as can... if 2020 can't get any worse. <laughs> exactly. It's a, you survived a pandemic. Let's have Mariah Carey have on a... repeat for the next four months. Oh, no, it's not just Mariah Carey. The it's Pogues. Christmas songs. Mm -mm. So, yeah, Chris, Mariah Carey, The Pogues. The Pogues. The Pogues. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Um, Last Christmas. Slade. Um, Cliff Richard. Uh, yeah, all that joyful music. Well, no, I know people have like saying, no, this year's <laughs> enough as it is. Let's, you know, put the Christmas tree up mm -hmm. mega early. Let's just have... That's fine if you want to do that. Okay. Stand on my face. 
<laughs> well, they're not in your face, it's in your ears. It's in my ears. It's in your ears. Yeah, I don't like the idea of that. You don't like the idea of that? No. So if you found out that I'd stolen your car keys at one point during the recording of this mm. show um, and tuned your, your radio into that station, you're not going to be happy. Well, I would say, well done, um, because I, dro I, I drive a horse and cart. <laughs> and, um, and the gramophone on the back is, is only tuned into... Oldies FM. Oldies FM. Well, it's, yeah. it's now tuned into a radio station purely playing Christmas yeah, songs. I don't get uh, If you want to do it, that's great. You freaks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not, not for you, then. No. Yeah. Let's go. Let's wait till December. I, I go in to a rant every year <laughs> from kind of like mid-October to, to like the week before Christmas, like when it is too early. Christmas should be dis start in December. I, when I was a child... Well, you know, I'm going to go off on one now. Oh, yeah. When I was a child... <laughs> Back in the 1830s. They didn't start advertising Christmas adverts on television until the beginning of December. They didn't. <laughs> Bring back those days. <laughs> as well as public hangings. <laughs> and floggings. And floggings. Yes. Yeah. But what I always like about Christmas is, just after Christmas, you get to buy Easter eggs. You do. On Boxing Day. And it used to be a time where you used to be able to go out and buy Christmas decorations on Boxing yes, Day. Yes, yes. And they were a bargain. Mm, it's a circle of life, Mike. Exactly. Just sped up really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> to buy more things. Yeah. 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 OK. Well, we'll move on then, shall we? Please. Let, get, let, let get the rage out a little. Yeah, the rage. Let it, let it settle. We're going on to a story now. When you're stuck in traffic, right, and your, your gramophone's not working, what, what do you do to pass the time? Um, I do all legal things. OK, so no um, masturbation. So I, <laughs> so I don't do any of the things that you're not supposed to do. Um, uh -huh. I, I have little conversations with myself. <laughs> OK. Mm -hmm. And I do different voices. Um, I... Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I do. It's, it's, I can believe it. That's what's funny. I, I've got this image of you going, hello, how are you? I'm good. I you? So if I'm like going to a meeting or something, I will like role play the conversation out. Okay. It doesn't go the way that I role play it. No, because the other people are involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, 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 yeah, I genuinely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or I masturbate. <laughs> and apparently that's legal now. Good news. Um, hands free. That's not masturbation. If it's hands free. It's the way I do <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, one group of people decided, while stuck in traffic, to have a karaoke session. Oh, well done. So, yeah. Um, uh, during the thunderstorm, they couldn't go anywhere. So, in the south of England, everyone got out of the cars and started having a karaoke sing-along. In a thunderstorm? In a thunderstorm. When the lightning is going... Yeah. That's safe. It's dramatic effect, isn't it? <laughs> well, you're surrounded by metal. If something's going to yeah. get hit by lightning, it's not going to be you, is it? Well, it'll transfer to you. It'll transfer to you. They go down. Yeah. So not, not, yeah. not sideways, down. What did they sing? They, they sang a variety of songs. It's Raining Men. Hallelujah, yeah. Blame It on the Weatherman. Mm -hmm. Bewitched Reference. Yeah. That's current. Yeah. <laughs> Rainy Days and Mondays by The Carpenters. Rain by Madonna. <laughs> oh, uh, we've got, we've got to Rain on Me by Lady Gaga and yeah. Ariana Grande. Yeah. Let's go to yeah. something that Let It Rain by E17, your favourites. I know one E17 song. <laughs> <laughs> Let it rain. Oh, I'm going to get their greatest hits out on the way home. <laughs> All three songs. Are it. All three. <laughs> did they have a lovely time? They did. They had a lovely time. Passing, passing the thunderstorm. The, the smell of petrichor. There you are. The smell of petrichor. That's the smell of the earth. Just after it's rained. Yes, yes I, know the, I know that. Okay. And if something makes you giggle on the internet, why not share it with us? Just look for The Could TV on all the usual social platforms. Our inbox is waiting for you to fill it. And that is just what happened this week when we received a letter from Mrs. Mycock in Cockermouth. And she asked... Dear Boots the Chemist, My husband, Pat, recently bought one of your stick deodorants, which I return for a full refund. He followed the instructions to the letter and, long story short, following several hours in accident and emergency, is still not able to sit down. Please review the product packaging and remove the line. That says, to use, unscrew cap and push up bottom. On the plus side, his farts now smell of Old Spice so it's not all bad. Yours fragrantly. Mrs. Belinda Mycock. There's always a silver cloud to every line. To every... <laughs> There's always a silver, always cloud, a silver to every cloud to every lining. <laughs> There's always... Yeah, there is. Yeah. There's always a lining of silver. <laughs> 
Are you trying to go for the uh, silver lining to every cloud? Yeah, I was just it was it was her, his, his fart smelling of Old Spice. That, <laughs> it's right, yeah. that quite frankly got me slightly aroused. <laughs> Have you ever had uh, Calvin Klein or Hugo Boss up your chocolate starfish, Lee? I deep throated a jumbo can of Shaw for men. Mm, sure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And that brings us to the story of the week. We've all used those lovely little car wash machines that you just pop your car in, it drags you through, and it rinses you off. Those lovely little car wash car machines. Car wash machines. Yeah. Little so cars. Not, where, not one where you have to spray it yourself and do yeah, it. Yeah, the, the ones that go... Yeah, you, you sit in and it drags you yeah, through. Yeah, the rolly thing. Rolly, rolly, mm -hmm. blowy, blowy thingy. OK. Uh, when one gentleman in Australia mm -hmm. decided, I'll have a go at that, and so walked through in the nude. OK. So, yeah, a um, naked man walks through taking a shower through the car wash. Oh. OK. Sounds like a fun idea. Those jets are strong. Those jets are also filled with chemicals. Oh, dear. That are designed to loosen grease and bird poop. Um, it got to the point where he was walking through the car wash. And he's dropped off. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. But it, it sprayed him with these chemicals and then the car wash... Recognising that there may not be a car in there, okay, stopped. Right. So it didn't rinse him off afterwards. Oh, he just burned. He got chemical burns all oh, over himself. So dear. he had to rush outside and, and get his friend to hose him down. So he didn't even get through the hot wax or the blowing afterwards. Oh dear! What possessed him? Believe it or not, he wasn't sober. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So he actually worked at the car wash. Oh, he worked he there? He worked there, yes. Turned up for work, said, I need to shower, I smell a bit like a brewery. Oh, oh I'll know, I'll just bob through there. Does he still work there? No. Oh, that's a shocker. <laughs> no longer works at that establishment for some reason. No. Mainly because of the chemical burns. Uh, well, one would imagine, yeah. Yes. He's got a really shiny full skin. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he didn't get as far as the wax. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he, did, he didn't get the waxing and the blowing. No. Or the beating with the brushy thing. No. 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 <laughs> so, mm. Only use car washes for cars, vans. No motorbikes. Horses. Horses. No, no horses, Lee. Can't put a horse through a car wash. Oh. Animal cruelty. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of the buzz this week. Don't remove yourself from the situation, as coming up next is our life lesson. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for this week's... Life Lessons. Are there any more life lessons left, you ask? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely loads. Why, I believe the question is. Why? Why are there still Why? life lessons? We're going to have a little bit of a life lesson mega mix today. Ooh. So, yeah, we're going to do lots of different um, life hack type things today. Okay. Things that are just lying around the house that you think, oh, is there more than one use for that? Well, yes, there are. There's more, there's, there's more uses for lots of things. Well, first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna start with that problem. So imagine this, you've got a job interview, Mike. Mm -hmm. You get yourself up, you wash yourself in the shower, you put your, your suit on, mm -hmm. inflatable dinosaur costume, whatever it is that you wear. Uh -huh. um, you rushing, it's a hot day. Oh no, my deodorant has let me down. Everyone's not... worst nightmare yeah. in the interview it's is having pits. pities. Yeah. yeah. So what you can do is you pop to the shop and you buy yourself a packet of fairy hammocks. Okay. Or panty liners. Feminine hygiene products. Feminine, feminine and hygiene products, yeah. Yes. Now these are absorbent. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, they so, should be, yes. Yeah. So what you can do is, to kind of stop that kind of gushing armpit situation, mm -hmm. is you can just pop a sanitary pad under each armpit. Okay. Now, don't take the sticky back off and stick that to your armpits, because that will hurt when you try right. to remove it. But, yeah, just pop them underneath, mm -hmm. and they will absorb the sweat, and uh, Bob's your uncle, and you won't be sweat. Now, if you're a gentleman of a certain size, and you might have that, you know, the moob sweat... I get moob sweat. Yeah. You could stick one under each moob underneath your clothes, not on top of them, because that would look a bit strange. So, I don't, don't walk like this? No. You put it... You, you put it... You would lift your moob up. <laughs> Stick the towel underneath, drop your move down, and it would catch it. Uh -huh. And if you kind of get, if it's a kind of a squeaky bum time, 
I'm sure, you know, if you're a bit nervous. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, you could pop that between your cheeks. I suppose you could. Mm. I'd never see it again, but I could. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and also Betty Swallocks. There's many uses for these. Thank yeah. you for that one. So, yeah, so you're welcome for that one. Now, have you ever thought to yourself, God, I wish my eyebrows were a bit thicker? No, I like my eyebrows. Well, for, so, so just, just for the sake of argument, uh -huh. if, you, if you had wispy eyebrows uh -huh. and you wanted to thicken them up, yeah. there is, there is, you, don't, you don't have to go to the shops and buy expensive... Merkins. Eyebrow wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Merkins. Merkin on one eyebrow, Merkin on the other eyebrow. Um, no, you just get yourself a bar of, of, of common or garden soap. Garden you, soap. You've, have, you got, have you got it, yeah? I've got some soap here. So soap, it's velvet touch soap. Ooh. Mm. So just any old soap will do. It's got to be a bar of soap, not, not liquid soap. Oh, mm. is it supposed to look like this? What does yours look like? It's, it's all bubbly. Oh, it's got little flowers on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we've never seen soap before. It's like the caveman inventing well, I, I, fire. I, <laughs> see, I, I do use soap, but it's just a block of soap that I use. Okay. There's no, no fancy embossing and things. Well, welcome to the world of luxury products. Oh. 20p. <laughs> so, what you do is you get your bar of soap mm -hmm. and you get a toothbrush. Um, and you, so I'm going to take my glasses off for this. Um, take my glasses off, sorry. Yeah, you get a, you, you rub the um, um, toothbrush across the soap. It's all gone ASMR now, hasn't it? Rub the toothbrush across the soap. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then once, once you've got some on, um, <laughs> you brush your eyebrows with it. Oh my God, your eyebrows are so thick and luxurious. To be fair, I don't think that's worked. I'm just thinking, I think the soap has to be wet. Do you like some water for your brush? No. Oh, I've got a drink there. There you go. Just want your drink. You, all right, I'll just stick it in with you. Okay. Didn't want to drink anyway. Just foaming up a little bit, tiny bit. Foam. It smells Ooh. lovely. And, and then just don't stick it in your eye. You don't want a red eye. Do it up. Oh yeah, that's worked really well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thick, thick eyebrows. Um, the only problem with this I foresee, I suppose you could do it in your tash as well if you wanted to kind of tame your tash down or your beard. Um, yeah, my tash. You could, yeah, you could, you could put a little bit in that. Yeah. The only sort of problem I see about this is if it starts raining, then you're just going to foam up, aren't you? Your face is going to foam up. I've had worse problems. Yeah. Like I can now smell this soap non-stop. Well, yeah, but it's nice. Mm. Ish. Yeah. And I can't see. So it's a tip. It's a tip. I'm it's not saying you have to. I'm just saying it's there. Okay. You know. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Now, yeah. Let's, uh, let's move on to another life-affirming tip. Um, you like a smelly toilet roll, don't you? A scented I, toilet I, roll. I do enjoy a flavoured toilet roll. Flavoured? Flavoured. I always call it a flavoured toilet roll. Eat it. No, it's just a flavour. It's just, it's just an aroma. Yeah. What, what kind of aroma do you... What, what, what is your... I, I enjoy a coconut one. And I bet they cost pounds, don't they? Well, they, they do because they're, the, they're soft and fluffy mm. and lovely. You don't need to do that, Mike. OK. You can, do, you can do your own version. So you get yourself a roll of toilet tissue. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you get some, some essential oil. Um, or, you know, like home fragrance, that kind of stuff. We have got rose. Rosebud. Okay. For the toilet. Do you see what I was doing? I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> and then what you do is, so you take take the top off your um, your poppers. <laughs> <laughs> you're, they might be brand new and they might have that little plastic um, butt plug. doohickey on them. The butt plug? Yeah. Ooh, rosy. Woo! Shall we dance? <laughs> oh, it's, it's not that kind of smell. No, do you not like that? You don't want another wee poop shoot? No. I, I don't want this up my poop shoot now. No. Okay. It's not well, like a song by Cher. Poop shoot. No, that's the shoot shoot song. Oh, right, okay. Not the poop shoot song. <laughs> <laughs> the, poops, the poop shoot song. That soon is kiss. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> What you do oh, is, that one. <laughs> you, so whatever fragrance, you know, if you want a bit high karate in there, just, you know, do that. Um, what you do is, you get your, your aroma and you drip um, some of the, the oil onto the 
end of the toilet roll. Okay. Okay. So it absorbs it. And then you would turn it over and do it on the other roll end. Ooh. And then you now have soggy toilet paper okay. <laughs> that smells of chemicals. With um, strong smelling rose oil. Mm hmm. Which, unless I'm very much mistaken, um, can cause allergies. Can it? Yeah, if you're sensitive to rose. Oh, right. Or you have sensitive skin. Well, I would imagine that's the same for all aromas, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. Don't, don't. If you're going to come out in a rash. Don't stick it up, yeah. Don't stick it up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> plainly simple, really. Um, so you will now have a lovely fragranced roll of bog paper. Ooh, I'm I'm looking forward to a dump later. It's like it's like like I'm taking a dump in a rose garden. We're coming up to this oh, is the very last one. I'm so do you, do you enjoy finger food? I do enjoy finger. Do you food. enjoy a sticky rib? I, I'm not a fan of a sticky rib. Are you not? No. Do you enjoy a Finger of fudge? Uh, yes, I do enjoy a finger of fudge. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, foods, finger foods, like things like ribs or chicken I mean, I like, the, I like meat off a rib. I'm just not a fan of trying to gnaw through a bone. Ah, uh, well, uh, this tip is going to change your life, Mike. Ooh. You know these weird plasticky things that ladies and gentlemen put in their hair to, to, to keep their hair from out of their faces? You could put them on your nipples yeah, as nipple well, if you wanted to. Um, well, what you do is... They, these make excellent um, utensils for eating sticky, difficult finger foods. You, I, will, I have provided you, Mike, with a Tupperware tub which uh -huh. contains a dog poo. Huh. It isn't a dog poo, it just looks like a dog poo. And I don't like the look of it. Um, they're, they're barbecue ribs. Ooh. Okay, so what you do is you get... You get your clampy things and clamp it on one end of a rib and then clamp it on the other end of a rib. Like so. <gasps> it's magic. And I then have you... a problem with this. Well, no, turn it around the other way. Turn, turn it around. Yeah. So then you can now go... Nom, 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 nom. I'm not going to eat it because I don't like them. Is that a success? All I can smell is soap. Well, you've got soap in your tash. Yeah. Yeah. I'm eating meat out of air grips. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's show. We've got just enough time to say find us on social media platforms, look for The Could TV, and for our website, look for The Could TV. And while you're there, have a look at our support section for extra content, including outtakes. I like the last cookie at the bottom of the jar. We've got the final crumb left, and that's the photo of the week, which this time comes from Mr. Dandelion Suction Cup, who lives in Spunk Creek. And he writes... Dear Chewing the Cud, I wanted to share with you a photo of my big butt. There's nothing more satisfying than getting your butt filled, is there? Oh, that is a big butt. It is. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Mm. All you other brothers can deny. I love it, yeah. Yeah, I, I quite like the idea of having a big butt that's filled. Mm. Just because then whenever it's filled, it's ready to go whenever you need. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye.